What gear did I switch out this year? What's up everybody, I'm Dan and welcome back to Backpacking Adventures. I've been on a lot of trips this year. It's November and so far I've been on 16 backpacking trips with just about 700 trail miles. During this time I have taken gear away, I have added gear back in, and I changed out a few things. And today I'm going to go over the gear that I switched out throughout the year. I changed them out for various reasons, mainly be out of need. Now let's get into the gear and these are in no particular order. First one is my tent. The last couple years I've been using the Z-Pax Altiplex. This is a one and a half person tent. It uses one checking pole to set up. It's made of Dyneema, it's 15 ounces. And it's overall, I'm happy with it. It was a great, great tent. But I was looking for something just a little bit bigger. Something with a little bit more room that I could spread out my gear, I could relax a little bit more, have a little bit more room for myself. And my wife wants to start backpacking with me, but she doesn't want to stay in her own tent or she doesn't want to try a hammock. So I was looking for a two person tent. The new tent I got is the Durston X-Mid Pro 2. Now this is a two person tent. It is also made of Dyneema. You use two trekking poles to set it up and you can set it up with only about four stakes. I always use six, but uh, with the Altiplex, to really get everything tied out, you need 10 stakes. And this is also made of Dyneema. Now on this X-Mid Pro 2, I've used this on several trips already. And so far, I really love this tent. It has a pretty small footprint. It's very roomy and it's very easy to set up. Also, the doors, they don't use that little toggle thing like the Altiplex or the Duplexes use from Z-Pax. It has zippers and I'm really liking that. Another big example is the screen doors. They zip from the bottom up, so the screen door doesn't fall down or you're not stepping on it or crawling over it to get in and out of your tent. And the weight of this tent is about 21 ounces. I made a separate video on this a few months ago and it gets into all the details about this tent. I'll put it up in the cards if you wanna check it out. So the next thing I switched out was my hammock. Now this year I rotated in a bunch of different hammocks. Lighter hammocks, heavier hammocks, smaller hammocks made of different materials, just to try to find that better hammock. Now, I didn't try them all out there, of course, but for the most part, I always came back to my Dream Hammock Darien. The Dream Hammock Darien is an 11 foot hammock, and I've been using the Dream Hammock since, I think, 2018, 2019. I really love that hammock. Now, with the Dream Hammock Darien, there is nothing wrong with it. I still love that hammock, but through my trials, I think I found something I like better. So a few months ago, I purchased a new hammock from Hemlock Mountain Outdoors. And Hemlock Mountain Outdoors is a small cottage company located here in Pennsylvania. It's run by one guy, Kurt Zittleman, and he makes all the hammocks and everything he makes by hand. And the hammock I got from Hemlock Mountain Outdoors is called the Red Tail. And this is now my go-to hammock. This hammock is 11 foot long, it's 58 inches wide, just like my Darien. It's made of 70D ripstop nylon. The weight limit on it is 300 pounds. The total weight of it is 21 ounces. And one of the benefits is, is I got it pretty cheap. It was only $80 all in, and that included the hammock, the ridgeline, the ridgeline organizer, the stuff sack, and the full suspension, all for $80. And I'm going to have a full detailed review of this in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. But overall, I've been using this hammock and I am really loving it. It's comfortable, the zippers come off on both sides, which is a plus, and it is just overall a very, very great hammock. So the next change is with my water filter. If you've been following the channel, you know back in like 2018-ish, 2019, I use the Catadyne Bee Free. I didn't like that, it clogged up a lot, and I switched to the old standby everyone uses is the Sawyer Squeeze. Now this is a great filter. I mean, it works really well, except for over time, it tends to slow down. Even when I back flush it and clean it with vinegar and do all that stuff, it still tends to, to, to slow down. And I was looking for something roughly the same size, same weight, that has a better flow rate and now my new one is the platypus quick draw and i am very 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 glad i switched i'm very happy with this water filter 
I think I saw this water filter by watching uh, Jason Wish from Wishful Farms, his YouTube channel. He switched to this and it got me interested in it. So um, I purchased it. I got this early this year and I've been using this on every trip since the spring. This thing is great. It's easy to use. It's easy to clean. You don't have to back flush. You just put the clean water in the bottle and you shake it. And it really does clean it out really well. And it also has a built-in sport cap that's very sturdy and it seals. So, and it also comes with this cap for the bottom that you can keep in your ditty bag. So if it's going to be below freezing, you just put that on and you just put it in your pocket or throw it in your sleeping bag. You don't have to worry about it putting in a Ziploc bag. It's really great. It's also good for storing it. So now let's get into comparing of the two because there are some differences with these. Now both of these filter out the same things and I'll put a list of that on the screen with the exception that I don't believe this filter, the platypus filters out micro plastics like the Sawyer does. The platypus filters three liters per minute and believe me, it does. This has an exceptional flow rate. This filters two liters per minute. Is that much of a difference? Not really. The, where I really see the difference with the flow rates is I, when I backpack, I don't filter water and fill up my water bottles. I just fill my water bottles with dirty water and put this on top and I'll filter it and drink it as I go. So this really, I can drink a lot more water faster with this. It's just, it's just better that way. The platypus does not have a removable O-ring underneath. I know from those of you that are familiar with the Sawyer, comes with this white O-ring. And if those of you are familiar with using this, they come out quite easy. You almost have, you have to carry extras. I have extras in my backpack. With this, the, if this is the O-ring, it's attached. It is not coming out. And when you tighten it on your water bottle, you don't risk damaging it like you do with the Sawyer. So that's another plus with the platypus in my mind. Now, as far as the weight, there's not much difference in the weight. This weighs 2.2 ounces or 62 and a half grams. And this weighs two and a half ounces or 71 grams. So there's not that much difference in the weight. Now, the, the biggest difference between these two filters is the volume of water that they can filter. This can filter 100,000 gallons. This can filter 1,000 liters, which is only about 260 gallons. So there's a significant difference in the volume they can filter over their lifetime. But let me put that into perspective because I guarantee you none of you ever will get to 100,000 liters on your filter. So far, I've been on 16 backpacking trips and that's a total of about 50 days. So basically on each of those days, I would filter on average and on the high end to be conservative about six liters of water per day. That's a total of 300 liters. I still have 700 more liters to go on this. So that's at least another year for me. And I really, I've never had a Sawyer for more than a year or two at the, at the most. And that's mainly because they just get to the point where they slow down so much that I just feel like I need a new one. So I just, they're cheap, so I just buy a new one. And I know I'm never gonna get to the 100,000 gallons maximum. And I'm probably gonna replace this. I'll probably use this for most of next year and probably replace it in the middle of the year just to be safe. But I can tell you the one biggest difference, not just in flow rate is this slows down over time. This hasn't, this is still going the same rate as it did right out of the box. And I'm really happy with that. All right, the next thing I changed up were my battery banks. Everybody takes a charger along with them or sometimes even two. Now I was using the 10,000 milliamp battery from Anchor and for basically for my one to two nights max trips. And I also have this RAV Power 26,000 milliamp battery bank. And I would use this for trips over four or five days. You may think that, you know, 20 some thousand milliamps is overkill, but all my gear is rechargeable. I have nothing with batteries. And plus I take a camera and, and camera gear with lighting and extra batteries. So that's why I need more juice. And both of these worked fine. They're great. This one I've had for probably five, six years. And uh, this one I've had for over two years. Now I heard about this new battery bank, these new battery banks, and I checked them out and I purchased them. So what did I purchase? Well, I purchased these Nightcore NB battery banks, a 10,000 and a 20,000 milliamp battery. 
And these are smaller and much lighter than my other battery banks. But as another bonus, these are water, either waterproof or water resistant. And for the size, here's the Anchor 10,000 and the Nightcore. This is a little bit longer, but it's thinner and it fits in my Diddy bag a lot better. It takes up less space. The difference between my RAV Power and my other one, now granted this is 26,000 milliamp and this is only 20, but they're just about the same thickness, but this one, the Night Core is considerably smaller and lighter. This one weighs 5.29 ounces or 150 grams compared to the Anchor that is 6.35 ounces or 180 grams. So much lighter, the Night Cores are much lighter. So the Night Core 20,000 milliamp weighs 11.45 ounces or 325 grams. Or compared to the RAV Power 26,000 milliamp that weighs 16 ounces or 454 grams. So there's almost a five ounce difference in this. Now granted, this, is, this has 6,000 milliamps more, so that's probably where some of the weight, but just the size. But instead of taking this for 16 ounces, what I've been doing where on longer trips where I need the extra juice, is I just take both of these, the 10,000 and the 20,000, that gives me 30,000 milliamps or 10,000 more than just this for, it's the same weight, it's 16 ounces, 16.3, so maybe a half an ounce heavier. So I get more juice in a smaller package for the same weight. And like I said before, another great plus is these are water resistant. The next thing I changed out is my knife. So I don't even know for how many years, but I've been carrying this little Swiss Army Knife Classic SD, I believe it's called, and it's, done everything I, I need it to do. It's very small. It has the knife blade, a file and a little screwdriver, scissors, and it also has the tweezers and a toothpick. So it's pretty functional. Now, as far as weight, this thing is light. It weighs 0.6 ounces or 17 grams. However, this year, earlier this year in the spring, I switched back to my Leatherman Squirt. It's a little bit heavier. It weighs two ounces, and about, which is about 57 grams. And it has, it has the file, little screwdriver. It has a knife. It has scissors, just like the other knife. And it has a smaller screwdriver and a bottle, I guess, slash can opener. But the additional thing it has that the Swiss Army knife doesn't is a pair of pliers or cut and cutters. Now this doesn't have the tweezers and it doesn't have the toothpick. But what I do is I these come I take these out and I put these in my first aid kit because I still like the little tweezers and the toothpick. Now the main reason I switched back to this is because it has pliers. Also another thing is the knife blade doesn't feel as flimsy on the Swiss Army knife, you can kind of bend it. It just kind of feels like um, it can break. And I was always nervous when I would take like a block of cheese with me and be cutting it. It just seemed like it could break. So this seems a lot sturdier. The Swiss Army knife is still a great knife, but this is what I switched out to and I'm liking it. The pliers and everything else you can use to fix other things as well. So great little knife. It's a little heavier, but it's worth the wait to me. The next thing I switched out were my hiking shoes. These are the Hoka Speed Goat 4s. Now I know they have the 5s now, but at the time, these are the 4s. This is what I got. Now I was using the Hoka Stinson's ATR 5s, and I love those shoes, but now I was using them for a specific purpose. Several years ago, I was suffering from severe plantar fasciitis in both my feet. It was excruciating. And I chose the Stinson's before because they were the most cushioned with the widest toe box of any shoe I could find, and I could not use Zero Drop. So I used them, and over time, my plantar fasciitis went away. It felt great to wear those shoes. But early this year, I switched to the Hoka Speed Goats 4s, and I love these. They don't have a quite as much cushion as the Stinson's, but I don't have the plantar fasciitis anymore, and these are still very comfortable. They also, these also have the Vibram soles, so you don't feel those rocks as much, which are excellent. And the soles aren't quite as soft. That was another thing with the Stinson's, the soles were softer, again, to provide more cushion. 
And these are a little bit harder, so these last a little bit longer. I got on, I think this is my second pair this year of these, and I'm probably gonna replace them in the next probably 200 miles, but I got about a good 500 miles on my, my last pair of these. But when I need to get a, a new pair, I'm gonna get the Speedgoat 5s, because that's just the newest version. <clears throat> and the last gear, which is basically a lot of gear that I changed out, and I'm not gonna show the details of them, but it's basically all my clothes, all my pack clothes and the clothes I wear hiking, sleep clothes, everything, with the exception of gloves, hat, and socks. I had to replace it all. And if you've been following this channel, you know I've, over the last probably year and a half, two years, I lost a pretty significant amount of weight, almost 90 pounds now. So to put it in perspective, the clothes I were wearing, like for my shirts, were triple XL, and now I'm down to a medium. And for my waistline, for my pants, I was at about a 44 waist, and now I'm at a 34 waist. And I tried to wear my clothes as long as I could. If you probably watched up until the winter, early in the winter this year, I, on a couple trips, I was wearing some of those clothes and it almost looked like they were just falling off of me. So I really had no choice but to replace them all. So basically I replaced my puffy coat, my base layer, my hiking shirt, hiking pants, hiking sh uh, shorts, my rain gear, my rain jacket and pants, and my fleece. I had to buy smaller sizes. So that's all the gear that I switched out and um, basically some of the reasons why that I switched them out. So tell us all in the comments below what gear you changed out and why. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share it. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.